Christmas yet. We have 13 days. But as you can tell, I am excited as well as prepared. And we are to be the same way in the kingdom of God. We are to be excited as well as prepared about the word. Last week was absolutely phenomenal. Pastor Karen preached on system of the kingdom of God. Let's take a look at the recap. But likewise, the Lord has a system. He has frameworks and structures in place to achieve specific results called blessings. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, come on system, believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that's just the beginning. Because once you enter into the system of the kingdom of God, blessings begin to overtake your life. And it's an even playing field because in the system of the kingdom of God, it don't matter where you start, it's where he wants to take you. That's all that matters is what you allow him. I'm getting ahead of myself and I'm so excited. All that matters is where you will let him take you once you enter into the kingdom of God. So a person with no money can have faith and end up just as blessed as someone with a full bank account because in the kingdom of God, we're all equal. Calm down, Karen, calm down. Whew. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection birthed a whole new system for fallen mankind to not only get reconnected to God, but to overcome the penalties of sin and regain the abundant life that we were ordained to have in the beginning. God's original plan for man was not all this pain and suffering. Man's fall into sin brought a whole lot of drama, disorder, confusion, and suffering. Somebody say we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Somebody type we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Absolutely rich and profound information. The part that stuck out to me And particularly during this holiday season, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Listen, I don't know what everybody's put on their Christmas list this year. I don't know what you have requested. But make sure that in this season, the most important gift that we all should obtain, and that is everlasting life. With that being said, let me get out of the way so that we can get to some more worship. If the Lord willing, we'll see you all on the other side. The Lord be praised. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can I get a couple excited people who are glad to be in the house today to clap their hands and open up their mouths and give God a shout? I say, can you clap your hands and open up your mouths and give our great God a mighty shout this morning? I'll give you a reason for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. I'll give you another reason. It is he that keeps us and not we ourselves. I need someone who's excited about just those two things to give God a shout. I said give him a shout this morning. I said give him a shout this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands on it, just like this. Whoa. You already are familiar, it says, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Can you help me sing? Lord, I lift say. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you're in my life. Anybody glad this morning? I'm so glad you came to save us. Let's stay right there. One more time. One more time. Lord, I lift sing. Lord, I lift your name on high. I hear you. Lord, I love to sing, I love to sing, Lord. I'm so very glad you're in my life. 
I think they're ready. I'm so glad. I'm so Let's glad take it right here. Come on, team. Help me sing a real good. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the from the earth. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name Now, put your high. hands on it. Everybody clap right here. Come on. Yeah, that's it. That's good. That's good. From the top, sing it behind your mask. Sing, Lord, I lift say. Lord, I lift your name on high. And we love to sing Lord, your praises. I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. Let's sing it up real good. Put some energy on it. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth, from the earth to the cross. My death, you came from the cross to the grave. From the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name One more time. Oh, you came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way. From the earth. From the earth. I will praise thee. 
me through. I have to give God praise. Hallelujah. When I think about the things I brought myself in, hallelujah, that he pulled me out, I got to give God some praise because he's faithful. Hallelujah. Because he's faithful. Hallelujah. Because he's faithful. Yes, he is. He's a faithful God. this song. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Say, I will sing praises. 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 I will sing praises till your name. I will sing praises till your name. I will sing praises. 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 Hallelujah. The reason why we sing praises, because he's been really good to us. Amen. The reason why we sing praises, because we're in our right mind to worship a living God, to lift him up and to exalt him. That's the reason why we praise him. We praise him because we got breath in our body on today. We praise him that we're not in a hospital on today. We praise him because we're through a pandemic. We praise him that he's been good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures through all generations. If you can lift up your voice and lift up your hands and praise the name of the Lord, for the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous can run into it, and they are safe. Hallelujah. Oh, I will sing praises. Hallelujah. If you could put your hands together and give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise from the podium to the sound booth. Everybody that has breath in the body, give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise. We offer up the sacrifice of praises, the Bible says, continually, which is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks uh, to his name. If his name is wonderful to you, if he's been the counselor to you, if he's been the mighty God to you, give the Lord a great big hand clap of praise on today. Great is our God and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank God for the praise and worship team. Give them a great big God bless you. Good to be back in the house of the Lord uh, one more time to worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. And we welcome you here, Set the Cab, this free outreach center, as well as those who are online on today. We greet you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming here. 
uh, for worshiping the Lord with us on today. Do we have any first-time visitors with us on today? Could you please stand away to acknowledge your presence? Any first-time visitors, please stand away to acknowledge you on this morning. All right, we have our brother to my right and your left. Amen. Thank you for coming to worship the Lord with us on today. Our Eagles ministry will be giving you some information that you can fill out. And please, at the end of the service, please drop it in one of our financial boxes to my right uh, and your left. It is our mission to fill the people of God with the word of God that it liberates us in every area of our lives. Our core values are the word of God, worship, uh, prayer, family, fellowship, restoration, evangelism, just generosity, as well as community. Uh, today, you could have worshipped anywhere else, but thank God you come to worship here at Set the Captives Free uh, Outreach Center, and we are thanking for your presence uh, on today. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge all of our STCFE family uh, members. If you are a member of our online campus, uh, drop us a hashtag eFamily uh, in the comments right now so we can show you our love and our appreciation for you. Let's give our visitor a great big God bless you again uh, on today. We want to continue to worship the Lord uh, in our giving at this time. All of our cheerful givers. Uh, for safety reasons, we, we request that you give electronically by clicking the link on the screen or via the church cash app. Our ministry cash app can be found at dollar sign STCF. Again, that's dollar sign STCF. Uh, please make sure you fill out your full name so that way you can receive tax credit uh, for uh, your giving. If you're worshiping here in the building, on the back of your chair, there's an offering envelope. You can fill that information out. And at the end of the service, my right, your left, you can drop it in the financial box uh, when you leave the service. And now we'll have our recorded announcements at this time. Good morning, STCF. Here are your announcements for today. Welcome to December. Pastor Linwood, Dr. Karen, and family wish each of you the joy of restoration this Christmas season. May God keep and bless you richly. Today, we will have a COVID-19 vaccine and flu clinic immediately after worship service from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. If you haven't pre-registered, it's okay. You can still get vaccinated today. Our community partner, Medley Pharmacy, will have medical staff on site to administer flu shots for anyone 9 to 64 years old, COVID shots for children 7 to 11 years old, COVID first and second dose shots for anyone 12 years old and older, and booster dose shots for anyone 18 years and older. When you exit the sanctuary, the Health and Wellness Ministry will direct you to where you can check in. Attention E-Church members, you're invited to join Pastor Karen today, December 12th at 4 p.m. for a special virtual Christmas party. Our STCF E-Church family are members of STCF who live outside of Maryland and have membership. Join the party via Zoom and wear festive clothing as we connect for holiday fellowship and fun. Check your inbox for an email with a Zoom link to join the virtual party. During December, we invite you to join in the STCF official community Facebook group each Tuesday at 7 p.m. We will feature replays and some of the top official conversation discussions held in 2021. This week's highlight is the Nation of Men's wrap-up, which was led by Pastor Linwood. You don't want to miss it. Visit our STCF website and social media for more info. Registration for the 2022 PATH Bible Study is now open. Bible study classes will start on January 12th, and all classes will be held online throughout the year. Save the date. We invite you to join us on Sunday, December 19th at 10 a.m. worship service to witness and celebrate the ordination to the pastorate of Brother Felix and Pastor Naomi Aslan who will be the shepherds of Set the Captives Free Outreach Center Canada, and Brother Troy and Dr. Gia Conway, who will be the shepherds of Anointed Touch Ministries in York, PA. Mark your calendar. 
This year's Worship Arts Christmas Experience presented by the Stage Worship Arts Ministry will be held on Sunday, December 19th during the 10 a.m. service. We are excited to announce that the ABC Kids Children's Church will host a pop-up service on Sunday, December 19th. During this morning worship service, children in kindergarten through fifth grade will explore the true meaning of Christmas and have a faith filled and fun experience. Visit our website and mobile app for more information. Do you like to travel and have a heart to serve? Come travel with our STCF Missions Ministry and the Mombasa Relief Initiative from August 9th through August 19th, 2022. We will be providing assistance to the children and families in Mobasa, Kenya. You will have an opportunity to be a blessing to others, have time to explore tourist attractions, and experience much, much more. Get trip details and sign up to express your interest via our STCF website and the mobile app. Now we want to wish a happy birthday to all this week's birthdays. And lastly, we want to wish a happy anniversary to all those celebrating a wedding anniversary. Have a blessed and conquering week at CCF and remember to take time to care for your health. A man too busy to take care of his health is like a mechanic too busy to take care of his tools. Amen. Could you bow your heads with me as we go before the Lord in prayer? Father, thank you that your name is Jehovah Jireh. You are the Lord who will see and make provision in our lives. Lord, thank you for being our provider. We enter into, we maintain financial covenant with you. Lord, we ask you to stretch our dollars further than they should or would go. Lord, we ask you to cover us with your favor, cover us with your blessing, cover us with your protection. Lord, as we take care of your house, we know that you will take care of ours. We bless you with our gifts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you believe that, give Jesus a great big hand clap on today. At this time, we'll ask our, ask our senior pastor, Dr. Karen Bethea, to come forth, as well as Elder Janice, uh, in the passing of the baton uh, on today. Give them a great big hand as they come. Where my usher? No, I'm just teasing. I'm so used to passing them. But good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a beautiful day. Any day above ground is a beautiful day. Any day that you have breath is a beautiful day. Any day that God has been faithful is a really good day. Can we just give the Lord a standing ovation? He deserves the glory. Come on. He deserves the praise. He deserves the honor. What an excellent God we serve. Father, all this love is for you. All this praise is for you. All this appreciation is for you. You alone are worthy. You alone deserve the praise. You alone. You are God and God alone. We love you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You can be seated if you can. I just had to get that out. God is just, he's so good. And he's so wonderful. And then he's so consistent. You know, who is like unto him? Hallelujah. So I'm here this morning for another passing of the baton. So we would like for those, uh, the information booth, the legacy, and the pantry. All right, here we go. For those participants to come at this time, and we want to pass the baton again. Amen. Change is a healthy thing. Never fight change, amen, because when you fight change, you miss out on something that could be better than what you have right now. Give them a hand as they're coming. Amen. So good to see all of you. He said, where the brothers at? Well, the brothers protect the village. Our men are all over, all over this building, making sure that we're safe in worship. Can we just... Give the eagles a great big thank God for them. Amen. The, the men around here, I tell you, no, there's not a man like a STCF man. I say it all the time, and I mean it from the bottom of my heart. So first of all, I want to start with the pantry. What an amazing job, Sister Agnes Hunter. 
What an amazing job you have done with the pantry. What an amazing... I watched you literally because the spirit of the leader affects those under them. You turned that place into a place where people felt loved, treated with dignity. They were never looked down on, never talked down to. Of course, you know I would have died. But, but you did it, and you did it with such grace and class. You turned a group of volunteers literally into a family. And I thank God for you. I'm so grateful to God for you. And right up under you, you're number two in the number two spot. Uh, My husband did this years ago, and I thought it was so wise. He said every department in our church should be three deep, a director, a second deep, and a third deep. Why? Because life happens. And Agnes served for so long, and people do get tired. Amen? And pastors should never um, equate faithfulness to how long people do something. Because change comes, and it's needed. So your faithfulness Never a question. But I am glad that you stopped when you needed to and said, you know what? I've done my time here. I need to move on and do something else. So I honor you for that. And thank you right in your stead. You trained up a leader who will now step in, Andrea Allen, who's been been in the trenches with you. And we do have to also mention Mildred. We miss Mildred. Mildred was a vital part of what you did. I don't think you ever took time to to really grieve her. We miss her, but she was a vital part of what you did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just take a deep breath. Yeah. That's real. I don't know why people think saved people don't ever uh, have pain or we don't ever get sad. You know, but sometimes you just need a minute to catch your breath. Anybody know what I'm talking about? With your saved self. Come on here. Thank you, Jesus. So thank you for passing the baton to Andrea. Amen. And God bless you for your faithful and dedicated service. So appreciate it. I love me some you. This is to you from the county. Baltimore County Council Resolution, be it hereby known to all that the Honorable Tom Kirk, on behalf of the Baltimore County Council, offers sincerest congratulations to Agnes Hunter, who is being honored for her dedication and service to the legacy LCD, LCDC, I'm sorry, pantry at Set the Captives Free Outreach Center. Thank you for all that you do, and may God's riches blessings be upon your life. I love you too. <laughs> I tell you, we have, a, we have a house full of beautiful people. It makes my job so much of a joy. This thing right here, Lord Jesus. If you want something done right, who you go to? Cam. I'm telling you, sometimes I'll text her, and it's not even by her department. I'm like, can you tell so-and-so to so-and-so to? But um, you've just been a faithful, dedicated, straight-up real, 100% you person in the Lord. And we just love and appreciate everything you do around here. She has moved from being in charge of the information booth to now service coordinator. And are you short on service coordinators? You got it? Okay. So she's responsible. On Sunday morning, you may see her looking like she's uh, needing roller skates. And I know next Sunday, I hope you have extra help next Sunday. Next Sunday, we have, y'all can be seated if you want. Next Sunday, we have the ordination and worship arts Christmas. You're going to be on steroids with me next Sunday. And I'm going to need all four of my armor bearers because it's going to be crazy around here. But I want to thank you for being so consistent, so dedicated, and for keeping stuff straight and helping us to really flow in excellence. It takes many hands. Many hands, they say, make light work. And because of people like you and there are a bunch of you here, our jobs are easier. So thank you. So she's passing the baton to Dorian Peoples. Dorian, 
take your mask down a minute, let people see who you are, because Dorian is real quiet. She's one of those people that if you don't pay attention, she can blend into the scenery, but I'll tell you, she's an amazing nurse and a beautiful person. She's about to finish ministers in training, so you're going to hear her preaching real soon. And I'm so proud of her little quiet self. Don't underestimate quiet people. Still waters run deep. Minister Dawn is quiet till she get the mic. So don't underestimate quiet people, right? But I, I thank you for stepping up. And it's funny, she and I were here Thursday night, and uh, she started asking questions about the information booth. I said, put the Dorian on it. Do your thing, and it looks really good, and I'm excited. Uh, come January, there will be reasons to report there, pick up things, and, of course, the lost and found. So just so you know, the lost and found is at the information booth. So, Dorian, welcome to Leadership at Set the Captives Free. So appreciate you. This Cam citation of many. Now... Pam couldn't be here today. Okay. So Pamela McCullough. Hi, Pam, because I know she's watching virtually. Pam, no, miss a service. Pam, thank you for your dedication and loyalty. Even in the wake of your husband's recovery, you led the senior ministry in a wonderful way. And we just want to say thank you to you. And Kim High is stepping in now as the leader of the Legacy Senior Ministry. Kim, tell them, tell them what you do for a living so people will understand why we have positioned you into that. So good morning, everyone. Um, I am an occupational therapist, and I do work in the aging profession. I am with the Baltimore County Department of Aging, so I felt like my duties that I do at work can certainly carry over into what I do into the ministry. So that is my plan and my hope that I'll be able to bring resources, information as it relates to older adults. Thank you, Kim. And listen, if you missed the, the month of November, every Tuesday, she had speakers and information on aging in the uh, official group. If you missed any of them, please go back and hear them and share them with your family and people that you care about because there's really great information. Gone are the days where all you do at church is hear scriptures. Now, be clear, the Bible, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, God's will has the topmost priority for me. But I'm tired of seeing saints that all they can do is shout. They have no knowledge and no information. Amen? Well, if all you're getting, get understanding. So God is first. But let me be clear. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done is first for me. But behind that, get some other knowledge. Hallelujah. I remember when I got saved, I was 15, and, and they, they meant well, but the saints at the church that I was going to, they said, don't you don't need to go to college? The rapture is coming. And I went home and told my father, he said, the rapture might be coming, but you're going to college. And I'm so glad I listened to my dad because sometimes super deep folk, they'll lead you wrong. Suppose I hadn't gone to college. I'd just be super deep, deep and spooky, but not helping change nobody's lives. So all that information that she brings to the senior ministry is going to be amazing. Amen. I want Minister Eddie to come and pray for y'all this week. This is God's man of faith. I call Minister Eddie Faith Man. He's been with us 21 years. And I just thank God for you. You know I... Amen. If we all could just touch and be in agreement, let's just bow our heads together and pray for them. Reach your hands out. Just touch them in the spirit. Amen. Father God, we come to you this day, oh God. We thank you for these faithful servants, oh God. They walked a faithful walk, oh God. And we thank you that, Father God, that they knew when their season in that area was up, oh God, that it was their time, oh God. But we thank you that you continue to bless them, oh God, in the next area they move in, oh God, in the next season that they move in in their lives, oh God. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, for everyone that is stepping up in their place, oh God, that you anoint them to be in that position, oh God, that you anoint them, oh God. Give them insight, oh God. Give them 
them wisdom, oh God. Give them direction, oh God, that they may lead those areas, oh God, even under the direction of the church, oh God, that they may fall into the five-year vision, oh God, in each one of those departments, oh God, in each one of those departments will be blessed, and they will be blessed to be a blessing, oh God. They will be blessed, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. They will be blessed that everyone that they touch, everyone that comes to that department, whether it's the information booth, whether it's the seniors, oh God, whether it's the food pantry, oh God, they will be touched by your spirit, oh God, that that person, Father God, giving them the food, oh God, will be anointed, oh God, to have a word of encouragement for them that day, oh God, that that person, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that just wants to know where the next room is, oh God, won't find the next room, but will find your presence, oh God. And we pray right now, Father God, even for the seniors, oh God. We thank you that, Father God, the wisdom that they have, we understand, oh God. And we no longer reject this society, oh God. We understand that the wisdom, oh God. So I pray for this senior leader, oh God, the wisdom she's already been sharing. That is, Father God, go forth and bless many. And Father God, we just give you all the glory and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. As they go back to their seat, give them a great big thank God for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. Yeah. As we move forward, we're about to go into another part of systems, but I want us to pray for uh, Dana Lewis. Some, Many of you know her, some of you don't, but she's the... Uh, head of our production ministry has a lot of responsibility she's responsible for the cameras the sound, just everything and so her brother is in hospice she texted me this morning about 6 30 said pastor they've only given him days now where at first they had given him weeks and so i just want us to touch and agree with for her family is that all right father we lift up dana lewis right now we lift up her family her brother God, our lives are in your hand. And even though we all have to leave one day, it's not easy saying goodbye to a loved one. So we place this entire system situation into your hands. We say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Father, prepare her family for whichever way things go. And be with them in Jesus' name we pray. Let the comforting power of the Holy Spirit be very real for them now. You said, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And so I thank you that we can cast out cares upon you because you care for us. And we love and trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. I also want to real quickly say thank you to Carol Jenkins and Cheryl Smith. They are providing socks, hats, gloves, and toiletry bags to the shelter. And uh, no one asked them to do that. That's just the heart of the people at this church. We're always looking for ways to give. So I wanted to thank them. Now, don't everybody rush in now with stuff. because, But, uh, but I thank them for, uh, you know, caring enough to do that. It broke my heart. I was here Thursday night. And I was coming for rehearsal. And one of my classmates from high school was going into the shelter. And she said, you look familiar. And I said, you do too. And we started chatting. And it, it just broke my heart. I'm telling you, God is faithful. And you don't knock anybody. You don't know how people end up in the situations they do. But you better thank God for whatever, wherever you are. Hear me? And be very careful about judging people who are having a tough season. And she just began to share with me, I used to live in so-and-so. I had a four-bedroom home, and this happened. And it just, I, I was messed up the rest of the night. I got home, and I started telling Pastor Limbo, and I couldn't hardly sleep because I couldn't get her off my mind. So don't ever think that you're too good for a season like that. But thank, remember to thank God. I'm telling you, he is keeping us. You hear me? Then I, then I saw a mother and a young son come up the steps, and I almost, I said, I just, I don't know if I, how much more I can, I, I can't take people in pain. It just pulls on me. It pulls on my anointing. It just, my heart just, I left here brokenhearted Thursday because I thought, God, what more can we do? We got to do more. So anyway, pray about that. Um, today, we're going to have a baby dedication right after this next presentation. But today is the next to the last part of the system series. How many of you have been enjoying 
the system series. Well, we have some professionals today. Uh, Minister Marlon, would you stand? He's he is uh, one of our ministers. You've been here what nineteen years, twenty years. You and Rorita so faithful. His prof, his wife, prophetess Rorita. Minister Marlon is not only an anointed preacher, but he's a pharmacist. And Dr. Gia, stand up, Dr. Gia. She's going to be ordained a pastor next Sunday. She is a, oh, Lord, I can't, you can introduce yourself the right way when you get up here. She's not an RN and she's not a doctor. She's right in the middle. What is it called? Okay, when you get up here, make sure you tell her, tell everybody what that is. But she specializes in cancer patients. And then Dana, Deaconess Dana Parker is a social worker. And uh, one thing I love about her, she is so thorough. So they're coming to you to deal with the health care system today. Anybody need more information about health care? All right. Y'all can do better than that. Okay. So after this selection from Throne Zone, the next voice you will hear will be the three of them. And then I'm going to wrap it up next Sunday or is it Sunday? Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up and finish the system of the kingdom of God. How many of you are operating in the system of the kingdom? Isn't it a good life? All right. God bless you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh Lord. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Oh Lord, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded. This is how I find my This is how I find my bed This is this, how This is how I find my bed With the lifting of my this hands This is how I find my bed Sing this is how This is how I find my bed By falling on my this knees This is how I find my bed Say this is how This is how I find my bed Oh, this is how This is how I find my bed this is how, this is how I fight my bed. It may look like, say, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like, say, it may look like I'm surrounded, but, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like, say,
This is how you win your battle. This is how you win your battles. This is how we win every battle. This is how we win our battles. This is how we win our battles. Our battles. Battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. Listen, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. We gotta move on. Oh, cause it may look like I'm surrounded. It may look sick. 2021 ain't over just yet. It may look like. He still can move for miracles. It may look like every hand lifted towards heaven. It may look like it may look like I hear you, whoever you are. I hear you. So much travailing, so much still got something that God is getting ready to perform. It may look like. It may, it may look like. Now open up your mouths and fight your battles right here. Come on with the shout. Listen, the people of Israel were charged to go around the wall and they didn't peck at it. They didn't throw stones at it. When they got to the wall, they were given instructions to shout and the wall came down. So whatever the wall is, 
that you think is going to keep you from going into the next season, you better open up your mouths right now and shout that thing down. Shout now. Shout now. And they're coming down. And it's coming down. Diabetes is coming down. Cancer's coming down. Homelessness is coming down. Depression is coming down. We are saved. We are saved. We are the call of the Lord. Shout down. This is how we fight our battles. This is how we fight these systems. This is how we fight these systems. And we always win. Hallelujah. Come on, I got 30 more seconds. Someone still needs to push a little harder before we got to go to our seats. You better take this moment. Don't leave here with whatever that weight you keep carrying back home with you. You better learn how to open up your mouths and scream in here. Let's and it's still coming down. It's still falling, it's still falling. The walls are still falling, the walls are still falling, they're still falling. Jericho's gotta come down. I said Jericho still gotta come down. Someone's still battling Jericho. You better learn how to open up your mouths and shout it down. We gotta move, we gotta move. We're done. Oh, Lord. we're done. This is how I. Uh huh. This is how I. On Monday, this is how I. Before you respond to that email, when that bill reaches your mailbox, who cares what the diagnosis is? My God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. By his stripes we are healed. Oh, this is how I find my battle. This is how I find my battle. This is how I find my God. This is how I
Anybody excited other than me that we're in the army of the Lord? That we're in the army of the Lord. We're on the battlefield and the fixed fight. The fixed fight. Glory to God. God bless you. Good morning, STCF family. I'm Minister Gia. And this is my wonderful panel, Deaconess Dana and Dr. Marlon Cooper. And we are here today to tell you about some lies of the healthcare system. I've been in the healthcare system for over 25 years, privileged to serve God's people. Even when it hasn't been easy, you may be seated, amen. Even when it hasn't been easy, to hold true to my convictions over the system, I want to tell you that God is still faithful. But we have work to do. And today we're going to talk to you about systems on three different levels. I'm going to lay a foundation for you this morning to understand this. And I want you to take a note, write it in your iPad, your sun pad, your note, the top of your Bible, wherever you need to write this. But I want you to write this, man, I need to learn to manage my expectations of the healthcare system. I'm going to say it again. I need to learn to manage my expectations of the healthcare system. And before we go further, our scripture reference today is coming from John 8 and 32, which has been the foundational scripture for the entire system series, which is then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And the second scripture that we're coming from today is 3 John 1 and 2 that says, Dear friend, I pray that you may enjoy good health and that all may go well with you, even as your soul is getting along well. Some versions say even as your health prospers. My brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this morning that God is not only interested in that we are prospering in our soul, but that we are prospering in our health. You have an amazing treasure in this temple that he was so intentional and deliberate about creating in his image. But I want to tell you this morning that if we're not mindful of how to preserve the image, the system we will become victims to. We are, a, we are in a physical body that needs care, but the healthcare system is not designed to keep you healthy. I want you to understand me. The healthcare system is not designed to keep you healthy. And the reason that we have sick people COVID patients in the ER in beds is because the system is not equipped for this crisis. And if we don't equip ourselves for the crisis, we will be demolished by it. The word of God says we are, our people perish for a lack of knowledge. A lack of knowledge. And I'm going to say not only do we perish for a lack of knowledge, but we perish for what we fail to take ownership of. For what we don't own, you know, I always like my kids like to say they grown. You're not grown till you own. You're not grown till you own. So we grown in here. So now we got to own some stuff. We got to own some stuff. As a healthcare provider, I am intentional about spending time educating my patients. That is the responsibility of the healthcare system to empower us, to educate us, so that routine visits really are routine. Not that it becomes the habit that, guess what, the system wants to keep us forming. So let me share some statistics with you for a minute. First of all, understand this, that our medical issues are people issues. Our medical issues are people issues. When there is a diagnosis, good, bad, or indifferent, hereditary, falling in your bloodline, 
The issue is people. The issue is people. What you don't know as a result of what people don't tell you. When is the last time you had a visit with your physician or your clinician and you asked them about your hereditary predisposition? Mama has diabetes, grandma has hypertension, daddy has cardiac. What's my risk so I can do better? Because I believe when we know better, and maybe I'm just a little naive, but I just believe that when you know better, you can do better. It does me no good to tell you about going on a diet if I don't tell you what kind of diet to do. It does you no justice if I don't tell you the steps to take to go see the next provider as a preventive method. I take care of cancer patients and unfortunately I want to tell you by the time I see them they're stage four. Why? Because somebody didn't listen to when the patient said something's not right. This is my body, not yours. And I'm owning because I'm grown. Because I'm grown. System algorithms that categorize people before you walk through the door, you've already been categorized. From the moment that you give your chief complaint, you've been categorized. That is why the emergency room is not your primary care. You're categorized. System social determinants of health decided by people's biases and judgment. What does that mean if I'm not in a certain category of health care? I don't have Blue Cross Blue Shield Federal, but I got a Murrah Health medical assistant. My income isn't in a certain bracket, so I can't possibly be able to afford what I need. I don't live in a certain zip code, so the services are only available to you Monday through Friday, 8 to 4. But if you live in a certain zip code, you can come 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. because I got after hours for you. Social determinants of health. Delays based on the gender of people. Women are often subservient. Our issues are often put to the side, oh, you going through menopause. I might be going through, but I don't necessarily want to stay there. <laughs> oh, she's just always complaining. Well, when's the last time you listened to the same complaint? Over and over again. Genderized. System delays based on ethnicity. If you show up and you're African American or you're Latina, you just might get to see the doctor in time. You just might get the referral. If you show up and you're poor, you just might get seen or delayed 10 hours to wait while you're in pain. You don't have a address. So where could we possibly send your follow-up care to? Well, if I don't have an address, can you help me find a place of shelter? Ethnicity. System delays based on someone's decision, how sick you are, you're not hurting that bad. Your ch her, her chest pain will trump the fact that you can't breathe. A system of triage. How long have you had it? Well, you weren't short of breath long enough. Your chest pain wasn't there long enough. You weren't bleeding from your stool long enough. Maybe the cola guard was inaccurate or you didn't call the doctor until five days later or ever think that maybe I just couldn't. But you're judging my timing and you're judging my other surrounding factors and you're judging my ignorance or the fact that I was too weak to do it or I didn't understand that I shouldn't be bleeding after menopause. You're judging my understanding as opposed to giving me understanding. Delays in health care. Delays based on the ability to pay and good insurance. Good insurance. So let's look at some numbers. 
When you go into a healthcare facility, specifically the emergency room, the electronic medical record has algorithms that are already designed to assign you a risk score. So as soon as you enter Alda Keith and you give your name, they don't care that you came in with chest pain. They're looking at the fact that you are a male and you've already been categorized as low risk. Why? Because you haven't spent enough money in the system. He's only been here, oh, let me see, Keith Penn Jones. Oh, never. So we haven't gotten enough of his money. The average black person had similar overall health care costs compared to other ethnic groups, but only 17.7% .7 received extra care based on risk assignment. So maybe had you had a two, I would have referred you to the cardiologist. But instead, I'm going to draw some blood. I'm going to give you an aspirin and send you home. I'm not going to ask you if your chest pain radiates to your shoulder. I'm not going to ask you, did he, do you have any slurring of your speech? Did you lose mobility? Did you lose loss of your bowel or urinary function? No, because you're category one. You haven't spent enough money in the system. The average black person was substantially sicker than the average white person with a greater prevalence of conditions such as diabetes, anemia, kidney failure, and high blood pressure. Care provided to black people cost an average of $1,800 less per year than the care provided to other ethnic groups. The algorithms are assigned based on cost. Therefore, specific racial groups, black Americans, Latino Americans, are often treated less often, even when they come in with high risk conditions. They will become lost in the system if you do not be your own advocate. If we don't learn to speak for ourselves, I don't care what you know. You know the five W's. Who? Who you sending me to? When? When am I going? Where am I going? Why am I going? And how am I going to get there? Is it a referral? Is it a phone call? Are you going to pick up the phone and call yourself? You going to tell mama and them? You telling my husband? You know the five W's. You don't need a degree to question. And let's kick this cow. You can question your clinician. My degree doesn't make me exempt from you questioning me. My knowledge doesn't make me better than you. But what God holds me accountable and charged for is I'm supposed to empower you. When I fall short, hold me accountable because I'm, I'm human. But you have a right to question the system. I got here first. Why did she get seen over me? Give me understanding before I go off. Help me understand the system because I'm about five minutes away from having a situation in this doctor's office. So help me understand. So what's the problem? And our bishop did so wonderful teaching us on systemic racism. Please put that slide up. The problem is rooted. Reduce access to care. Redu reduce access. Even if the places are there, either we don't know to go to them or the resources are so overburdened or overutilized that they are underutilized. What does that mean? Overutilization is when we're using something for a purpose that it was not established to be. The emergency room is overutilized. Stop waiting for something to linger. Stop self-treating yourself. Right Aid is not your doctor. If you've had a symptom for 24 hours or more, I need a phone call. 
Let me tell you it's nothing. Stop medicating yourself to the point where nobody wants to listen because now you've abated your symptoms so they're not there. Then a month later, they're back, and you come back, and you're like, well, I had it a month ago. Well, who did you see? So stop over-treating yourself. Underutilization is when we're not using what is there. After today, I want us to max the system out. You got health care. Stop waiting till you're sick to use it. Let's be reactive and not proactive. I've given prognosis to too many reactive people. I need some reaction. Use what's been placed in your hands, Moses. You've been given everything pertaining to life and godliness. We just got to use it. We can only get mad when it's failed us. We can't get mad when we haven't used it. Secondly, we don't trust the healthcare system, and rightfully so. There's been some things of mistrust, there's been some lies, there's been some incomplete follow through. If you're given instructions by your provider, there's an expectation of follow through. Whether it's a follow up, whether it's a follow up visit, there's an expectation as a patient, as a consumer of the healthcare system. We have jobs because of you. You don't show up, I'm unemployed. And I don't mind that kind of unemployment if you're healthy. But when there's a follow through, then we can be healthier. Not perfect, but we can do better, amen? Racial discrimination by healthcare providers. That's called internal bias. I've already sized you up before you came to see me. I've already made a decision about what I'm going to do because I've looked at your chart. I've looked in the system. Oh, I'm just going to give them a Z pack and send them home and we'll see what happens. Because I've sized you up based upon your name, your age, your gender, your sex, your, uh, your color of your skin, your ability to pay. Again, if I bring you back, I've already categorized you. And then the other side is that we also discriminate against healthcare providers. Do your research, track their record, talk to another patient, but don't block your blessing. I have patients that won't see me because I'm black, I'm a female, and I've even been, I've been discriminated because I believe in Jesus. You're bad. Because not only am I going to pray for you, but I'm going to educate you. And I'm going to take real good care of you. So don't discriminate without doing your research. You just might be blocking the best thing that will ever happen to your health. Failure to pay attention. Again, ask questions. Don't be so consumed about the problem that you forget what's contributing to a problem. Problems manifest from triggers. The system is designed to treat symptoms. I want to know what the problem is. I want to know what the pro what's feeding the root. What's feeding the root? Fear. I don't want to know what's wrong with me. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. And if you don't want to know by yourself, then take somebody. But you do want to know. Because what you don't know will hurt you. It'll kill you. And what you don't know, the system gets to assign it to you. They get to assign it. So you do want to know. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of sound mind. So you pray before you go, but go. And lack of knowledge, lack of knowledge. We don't know enough about our history. You need to know what mama had. You need to know what grandmama had. You need to know what's flowing through your bloodline because some things are lineage. 
Some things are genetically, uh, genetically set us up to fail. But if I know what mama and them had, if I know what was flowing back then, I know that I don't have to own that. I can live better. I can do better. I can be reactive. I don't have to wait for the chest pain. I don't have to wait to be on five different medications that mama are going to tell you why that kills us. I don't have to wait for that sentence. Well, that's just the way I am. The devil's a lie. I already told you that you are built fearfully and wonderfully made. You got to know what you're working with and who's, your, who's you are. We don't have to accept some things just because we're told it. Now, it's, if it's my truth, now tell me how to fight it. But you don't get to dismiss me and you don't get to treat it like I just was another file with a medical record number. No, I got some questions for you. I got some questions because I need some answers. So the system will make us choose if we don't open our mouths. We'll stay as Elder Keith was a level risk one because he ain't invested enough money. Come on back through Elder Keith and give me a little bit more of your money. Then I'll see you sooner and I'll see you often. But I need us to open our mouths. I need us to declare that we will no longer be victims of a system that's designed to keep us rotating, rotating like a hamster, never reaching a destination of prosperity and posterity, never reaching a place where we truly are healthy and are thriving in our health, not just, live, not just existing, but we're living. I want heaven on earth right now, but I need my temple right. And if she ain't right, it's some issues. And oftentimes it's because we don't spend time to sit down and talk about why I'm on 10 meds and it's 2021 and I've been on them since 1970. Marlon, you want to help us? Thank you, Dr. J. Is there a doctor in the house? Is there a doctor in the house? Yes, there is. There's a couple of us. Um, I think one thing that's just amazing is how, and everyone who ever comes to the pulpit knows this, how you can spend hours and hours of research. And when you get up here, God just starts tweaking some things. I got notes. I, Pastor, I got about 20 pages. You know how you get on Sundays, right? I got 20 pages. But the first thing God wanted me to tell you is this. You start dying the day that you're born. That's not in my notes. It was a download. You start dying the day that you're born. And I'm like thinking like, God, oh, why are you saying this? Because there's going to be things that happen to you in your life, both knowing, unknown, that can come through genetics or whatever. But if you automatically think, I'm dying every day, how do I prolong my death? How do I keep that from occurring faster? How about reducing some risky behaviors? Maybe if I eat better. There are a lot of things that we can do to stop us from dying sooner than we need to. God says that he wants us to have life in abundance, long lives. That's why I honor my mother and father. It says if you honor your mother and father, you get long life. And you say, I got to like them. I just got to honor them. No, I just. <laughs> no, I love my parents. I love my parents. <laughs> but there are things that we can do. And so by the time you get to the pharmacy, it's a lot of things that could have been done that weren't done. So now you have to exercise. Now you have to change your diet. Now you have to take these medications that have these side effects. And all of those things re require a certain level of discipline that you didn't have before you had to do all of these things. So now you got to be more disciplined to maintain the health that you have now by taking all of these medicines all of these diet exercise and regimens, working out. So one of the things we want to do is be preventative. We got to prevent. 
We got to prevent. So part of the proactiveness is preventing how soon you die. I know that's kind of graphic, but that's what we got to prevent how soon you die. By the time you get to the medication, should I take it? Should I take it? The vaccine, all of the government conspiracies and all of this stuff. If we were taking care of ourselves, these things would not even be named among us. And when they're here, then we have to be educated and to say, all right, what are my options? So one of the things I had, uh, a slide that I had was about shared decision making. See, for a long time, traditionally, we go to our doctors and they say, all right, what's going on? Okay, take two of these and call me in the morning. But it's your body. It's your health. Men. Men. How do you know all the statistics of the, your favorite athletes, fin, you know, your fantasy football, you know all of that. But you don't know the name of your blood pressure you medication. Preach. <laughs> you know all that. You don't know your blood pressure medication? His stats in college is not going to keep you healthy. <laughs> Women. Y'all know your blood pressure medication, but there's a lot of other things about the healthcare you need to know better than the housewives of LA and Atlanta and all of that stuff. We need to be informed because if you don't know, it can kill you. Now, as a pharmacist, I will tell you this. I hate taking medication. I hate it. And to, and to actually agree with uh, Dr. Gia, when I was 19 years old, starting out as a pharmacy technician, my boss, I love this guy. He mentored me. He was an African-American, owned his own pharmacy. He was a secretary of board, board of pharmacy, knew everything about pharmacy. And when I asked him, I said, all right, what is this thing about pharmacy and the key to it and everything? And he told me, and I'll never forget this all my life. He said, medication is to be sold, not taken. Now, this is going to sound crazy for somebody who runs a pharmacy. Like, hold on, you telling people not to take medication? No, I'm not saying that. Dr. Gia said, is once your truth comes to your house, you have a condition. Remember, you dying every day. Your blood pressure isn't the ideal blood pressure anymore. If it maintains at the high level, that's like this pump, your engine. Can you imagine just hitting your gas pedal and just holding on it and holding on it? What's going to happen eventually? The engine is going to conk out. You got to slow it down. Because we didn't do the things early or because of, for whatever reason, hereditary things. All right, now we got to take the blood pressure medication. But there are options. There are options. There's something called the shared approach to shared decision making. And if you can get that on the screen, just want to share it a little bit. It's five steps to how you interact with your providers. If we can get it on the screen, the first one is really in share is you have to you have to engage, and that is way too small for me to see. <laughs> Even with the glasses, that is way too small. Hope y'all can see me over there. All right, uh, you got to seek seek your uh, the the patient's participation. Number one is like buy-in. Buy-in. This is another thing God told me to share. Millennials and Gen Zers, they are not with this. Healthcare system and doing what people say, there's no buy in. When this whole COVID thing hit, they said, if you old, you're going to die. So young people said, well, I ain't old. I don't need the vaccination. That's changed with a couple of uh, Greek alphabet, though, didn't it? We got some deltas and we got <laughs> Omicrons. Some epsilons, iota, iota, kappa, mu, when all they all they come, then everybody gonna be like, all right, it's time to get vaccinated. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's been time to get vaccinated. It's been time. You, as a pharmacist, once again, and not wanting to take medicine, I have to balance. And even Dr. J, when she's prescribing, it's about balancing risk and benefits. Risk and benefits. 
So yeah, there's a risk to taking medication. You might have side effects, and side effects, is, believe it or not, is normal because no medication is clean. But once you start taking them, yeah, there's risk. And then I get a side effect. Okay, then I got to take a medication for the side effect. And then there's a side effect to that one. I got to take a medication for that one. And that's how we get to the five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten medications plus the iron you've been on since you were 17 because you have a menstrual cycle. You know what I'm saying? You don't need it anymore. So that's why we have to, it's, it's about routine maintenance. Routine maintenance. Your car, if you don't do anything to your car, it's going to conk out. It's going to conk out. With the prescriptions industry right now, it is amazing what's happening in the prescription industry. It's amazing. It's like the young people don't take it, but if you're over 65, you're taking 20 medications a day. Who's managing that? And you say you need a degree for it, but you at least need an AA degree to take all 20 <laughs> medications. To... Never mind the degree, Mo. They're just not going to take it. They're not going to take it. They're not going to take it. Another thing I want to share with you as far as education, because I don't want to take up too much time, I want Dana to have an opportunity to speak too. It's so, in the healthcare, Jen, we could, have, we could do a, a weekend conference on just healthcare. But I do want to make sure you understand that you have to know what you're taking, why you're taking it, the side effects of that. Know your prescription. You should know what your pre prescription pill looks like. If it's blue today and it's yellow the next day, I mean, even if they change generic brands and that happens in the pharmacy, at least question it. What's, what's up with my yellow? What's this yellow pill? I ain't, I ain't, I ain't taking yellow pills. Right? Question it. Know your prescriptions. Know what they are. Provide that to the provider when they get there. And not only prescriptions, but a lot of people like to take alternative things as well. Give Dr. Gia all of that information so she can put it into that beautiful brain of hers and do all the calculations to figure out the correct treatment. Then you get options. She'll go over the options. Make sure your provider tells you what the options are. If they just say, hey, here you go, out the door. No. What are my options? What are my options? What's going to happen to me? I, I always use this one example um, for blood pressure medication. It's a blood pressure medica uh, medication called Lasix. <laughs> the way it works is it removes fluid from your body through urination, right? And they always say, all right, you want to make sure you take one first thing in the morning, right? Take one first thing in the morning and, you know, and what if you're a truck driver? <laughs> truck drivers drive eight hours a day, and they on deadlines, you know? So I tell my truck drivers, when you drive, I drive between 2 and, you know, uh, uh, 2 a.m. to, you know, 9 a.m. Okay, take your medication when you get off. Now, there's other medications you can't take together, but these are some of the things that your provider needs to do. They got to know who you are to know how to treat you. Because if they, if they don't know who you are and if you don't force them to know who you are, they're going to treat the book. See, we learn through books. Books say do this if that, do this if that. And if there's no other information for us to throw inside of that algorithm, it already has an outcome, an output of what we're supposed to do. So I'm going I'm to leave you with this because I saw this quote, and this is what I want us to have in our spirits before we leave here, and then I'll turn it over to Dana. This is all I want you to say. Repeat it to me. No decision, no decision. about me, about me. Without, me. without me. So good, so good. God bless you, Dr. Lawley. Good morning. I'm coming to you from the perspective of parent or guardian regarding your children. Pray before you take your child to a medical facility. And I'm going to tell you why. There are larger academic conversations that are suggestions. In questions and interpretations of medical assessments of your child, you can become an offender. Pay attention when the focus shifts from the visit with the patient to you. 
The system is designed to ask questions without your presence. Know that you are to remain present. Be vigilant with being a part of your child's well-being. Be cognizant of where you take your child to receive health care. Pray before you go. I can't stress that enough. Somebody is always watching and waiting. The health care system. No one is exempt. Children and adults, uh, children and the elderly, excuse me, are our most vulnerable and high-risk population. And as Minister Mullen, Mullen said, we are also now with this millennial and Gen Z generation that if we don't shift our mindset, no longer will our children be burying us, but we'll be burying our children. I am not an advocate of medicine, medication, but do what you must to live. Do what you must to live. God has given us this wisdom for a reason, and we can't be so spiritual that we're no earthly good. And I know that's a cliche, but it's truth. I believe that God gives us wisdom and guidance to do certain things. He's given the wisdom of medicine. He's given the wisdom of social work. He's given us the wisdom of these things so that we can live, to, we can live better and we can live long. And we can live healthy. Before you make a decision not, sit down and have a conversation. Before you decide that it's not for you, sit down and have a conversation. Don't make your decision based off of someone else's outcome. We are all built different. We are all made differently. We all come from different bloodlines, different households. We don't all eat the same, sleep the same, live the same, breathe the same. We are not the same. The only thing we have in common is our humanity. But we must embrace that we have a responsibility. I want us to pray, absolutely. But pray that God would give us wisdom in how to be proactive and preventive. God, what do I need to do differently today that I wasn't doing on yesterday? It can't just be the January resolution. I want us to resolve to live every day. Every day. We have a whole lot less time ahead of us than we do behind us. What is it going to look like? What do you want that to look like? Regardless of the state of health. If you on 10 meds, live your best life on 10 meds, but know what you're taking them for, how to balance them, but also make health decisions so that just maybe you can scale back off of them. And it's possible. I was on a blood pressure pill for six months. I, when you can ask my husband, I told him, I will not be on this. What had to change? You got to shift some stress. You got to stop minding other people's business. And mind your own. You got to understand that no is a blessed word. You got to understand that we do more together than independent. I am not every woman. You are not every man. And it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to extend your reach. Don't pray and think it's just going to happen because you prayed. Faith without works is dead. What you prayed for, God's now, God is saying now we are the solution. God, give me wisdom. Give me a download. Show me who I'm supposed to be in alignment with. But let's stop, let's stop thinking that everything is everybody else's fault. You want to understand the system? Don't become a part of it. Amen. Amen. 
Hey, Dr. J, I just want to add this too. The internet is not a medical professional. I, I, I need y'all to retire Dr. Google. The internet is not a medical professional. And a lot of the information out there, and once again, we have gone through a lot of training, but we've been trained to determine the veracity, the truthfulness, and the accuracy of the things that's out there through studies. An opinion is not a study. So as a lot of people go to the internet and they start making decisions without talking to a professional. Consult your physician or pharmacist, right? You hear that all the time. Consult us. That's, like, that's what we get paid to do. Please stop going to the internet for your medical information, for your medical advice, and for your medical instructions. It is not a medical professional. Can we all agree with that? Can we please agree? And the balance to that, Marlon, is if you are going to go to a site, get a reputable site. Do you know that you can alter Wikipedia? I can go on Wikipedia and create my own definitions. Please don't take your doctor a Wikipedia printout. I saw this on Wikipedia. I said, and then I said to them, now go under sausages and see the definition that I put for sausages. Don't take Wikipedia to your doctor. Get sound resources. Some of us, I do believe in the power of adjunct or complementary medicine and Western medicine, but there's a balance. There's a balance. If you have a defined health condition, please don't say, well, I'm just going to take all of these minerals, all of these vitamins, and ignore the condition. There must be a balance. There is absolutely a, pow a powerful benefit of using frankincense and lavender and myrrh. I love them and do them all day long. But there is a balance to what you're prescribed. But you must bring that understanding and get that understanding before you base it off of what somebody tells you that they're doing. The second thing I want to tell you is that don't become a victim of the system without seeing the follow through. If someone told you that you were going to be referred to another provider or another clinician, where's the follow through? The problem won't get better if you don't see the follow through. There are disciplines for a reason. No man is an island. So if I've referred you to the orthopedics, or if I referred you to physical therapy, please don't tell physical therapy you walk around your house. You need to get out and move. Follow through. You're not grown until you own. Amen. And lastly, fight the biases of the system by becoming informed. Yes. Fight the biases of the system by becoming informed. Know what you are entitled to in your insurance policy, yes. in your health care insurance. How many of you know that you have a gym benefit to your insurance? How many of you know that you're entitled for a healthcare provider to come in your home and review your medication with you? How many of you know that your insurance company will give you a card with money if you just report, I took my blood pressure pill today, or I walked five miles today, or I ate this today? How many of you know that? Read your policy. Yes, indeed. Look at the benefits. It's not just because of when I'm sick, I can show my card. There are health benefits that are designed for you to ignore because when it comes in the mail, we put it with the circulars. Open it because in it is your health incentives that say if you enroll in this gym, we'll give you $25 a week. I'm not making it up. We'll give you $25 a week just to go walk. Got all those apps on your phone, on your arm. Use them. And, doc, doc, and document I, what you're doing. Diabetes. And, Doc, I just want to say one other thing. Please, the first time you start any medication, consult with the pharmacist when you pick it up. And if it's, doing through, if it's through delivery, ask them, I want to consult with the pharmacist about my medication. 
Do you know every time you pick up the prescription, you know how you sign? Yes. That is a federal law saying that you're signing, waiving your right for the pharmacist to counsel you. Amen. It's not saying you're picking up your prescription. Yes, ma'am. Amen. You're how, saying, I don't want my pharmacist to that? counsel me. How many of you knew that you weren't signing for your med, but you were waiving your right to speak to the pharmacist? You're not signing for your med. You don't have to sign for an antibiotic. You don't have to sign for a routine medication. Unless you are picking up from an inter-office dispensary, you are signing away your right to be informed. You're signing away your right to say, I, want, I needed to know if this medication interacts with my thyroid medication or if it interacts with my chemo drug or should I be able to take ginseng and herbal roots or echinacea. You're signing away your right. Don't sign it without reading it. If you genuinely don't need to know, amen. But don't sign it away without reading this isn't just about staying healthy just to say that we're healthy. We all have a kingdom assignment. And we can't do kingdom with a temple that is slowly deteriorating. We want to shout, and by the time we finish shouting, we can't breathe. Roll around in the floor, but your knees are hurting. No, this temple isn't meant to be perfect forever, but we sure can do better to maintain her so that she can run the race that has been set before her, so that he can run the race in the assignment upon which is, which is upon your head. But I need us to do better, not just as a people of color, but as a human, human, humanity. We have to do better. Because the system, as we can see right now in this pandemic, is exhausted. We are running out of blood tubes to draw blood in. Band-aids. We must do better. We are a part of the solution. We're not the problem unless we keep rolling through the system, amen? We're not the problem unless we keep rolling through the system and not utilizing what has been put in place for our utilization and our access over what we are over-utilizing that is not meant to access. Health maintenance means I understand what's on my plate as it relates to my health, and I want to maintain it. I don't want to keep finding new stuff to need a new prescription. I don't want to see any of you all in my practice. But above all things, the word of God says that we would prosper in our health. God said it. And I just believe that there's someone in the room this morning that's saying, I'm not even sure that I'm prospering in my soul. You're talking about my body. My whole mental portal is jacked. My soul's not even right. I just believe there's somebody in the room this morning that says, I want to be everything that God says that I am to be, mind, body, and soul. And if that is you, I'm asking you to meet me here at the altar this morning. Because it is not God's desire that any man should perish. He created this wonderful temple. And when we give the body what it needs, do you not know it will heal itself? Cellular repair is our portion. Healing is our portion. It's not worse just to declare we were made to heal ourselves. But you got to know how to do it. And the first part starts with declaring that the Lord and God is my Savior. That, God, I want to offer my soul to be healed first, and then I can fully, fully check into the opportunity to give you all of me. 
If you are here this morning and you don't know the Lord as your Savior, raise your hand. Amen. So now that everybody's healthy in their soul, we need mind, body, and soul healing. We got to take some ownership. We got to have some accountability. And that means holding ourselves accountable and holding the system accountable. Hold your pharmacists accountable. Hold your clinicians accountable. Hold your social workers accountable. Don't abuse them. Love them. Appreciate them. And as Minister Dana said, you are to create a presence. Don't you dare leave your child in the room and let somebody start questioning them. The power of suggestion. Is that not how Eve got convinced that, that, that God really didn't give a directive? Suggestion. And when we don't know certain things, we will be convinced that the suggestion is really what's wrong with us. Oh, maybe I do have a brain tumor. I've been having headaches since. Girl, just put your glasses on. <laughs> suggestion. Maybe I really am diabetic. Why? Well, because grandma was diabetic and... Mommy said that, go get your blood sugar checked. Change your diet. Walk a little bit. Do some cycles on the bike a little bit. But own your health. After service today, you can meet Medley at the, is that the west, east? Yeah, so... Um Medley Pharmacy is a new pharmacy that just came to uh, Maryland. We actually are partnering with Set the Capture Free today to do uh, a vaccine clinic where you can actually get boosters. We've had uh, a, a large number of registrants, so that was amazing. So we have Amen. about 70 people Amen. who are, we give God are coming today. Amen. Amen. So, so if you're here, um, after service, uh, let's out. If you're here, um, we have a little reception area um, where we'll be having people. We'll get further instructions there. Um, but... Hey, I run the pharmacy, y'all. It's, it's me. It's the first one. Put a plug out there. It's a really wonderful pharmacy. They're all about community. They're about people. Every I mean, I get to speak to the CEO in, you know, almost every week. So how many people get to do that at that job? So he's really about the community. He wants to put a stake in the community. And the first thing we did was partner with Set the Captures Free so we can do it right. So Amen. I have my pharmacists here in the back. They'll be waiting. Um, and we have shots, flu shots, COVID shots. You can get them together. I don't know if you knew that. You can get them together, but we'll get further information right after service, and we'll be ready to serve you. Can I just add a couple? I have a couple more things I want to say. So, yes, Marlon, I agree. You can get your vaccinations together. Just be mindful if you can handle them, okay? Getting them together means they're compatible. Doesn't mean your body can handle them. So if, you, if, you're, low, if you're low sensitive or vaccination sensitive, get what you need to get today while it's available Especially if you have high risk conditions, I would certainly encourage you to get your booster or your COVID vaccination. But just be mindful that compatibility doesn't mean that my body's compatible. Okay, so be mindful of that first and foremost. Secondly, I also will have a handout back there where Marlon will be giving um, 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 vaccinations. Questions to ask your provider or questions you want to know when you go to see your, your clinician. You can add to them whatever you want, but I've given you 25 things to think about when you go to see your provider that you may have never even asked them, but now is the time to ask them. Amen. Did this help you all? God bless you. Stand to your feet. Can we give God praise? Can we give God praise just for what he does, that he's so mindful of us. And we just honor the shepherds of this house that care enough about us to say, I care about your soul, but I need the, I need the temple that houses the soul to be on one accord. So we thank God. We bless Pastor Karen and Pastor Linwood, and we honor absolutely the privilege to serve this house in this manner. Thank you all. God bless you. Be healthy, be proactive, and then you can be grown. <laughs> Speaking of grown, she is grown now. I miss you already.
this thing getting ordained next Sunday. Lord Jesus, she full grown now. Amen. You got to let them go when they get full blown. Can we get the pulpit over here? Who's on? We're about to dedicate a baby. All three of you just stay right there. Can we just thank God for these professionals and all that they have shared? All that they have shared with us. I just thank God for all of these amazing resources we have right in our house. And uh, and we are going to take heed. Amen. There's a, uh, Pastor Limbo and I, we walk two miles a day. And there's a, actually I did four the other day, but there's a video on YouTube. If you get a chance, Google it. It's the 10 benefits of walking. It will blow your mind all the things that God put in place for us to live long and healthy. Because if cars were never invented, we would have been walking everywhere, pretty much. So um, check it out. It's really going to bless you. We want to dedicate Rain Michaela White to the Lord today. Would Daryl and Rain now join us at this time? And we're about, oh, isn't she lovely? She is absolutely beautiful. Then we're going to go home, but we're going to dedicate this baby girl first. God bless you. Hi, Rain. How are you? You all right? You doing all right? She's looking around. She said, there's so much up here to see. Come on, board of directors. Would you come? You all always stand with me when we dedicate babies. Can I just first of all say thank you for having the wisdom to dedicate your child back to the Lord. So many people don't do that, and it is so important. We're going to put a prayer covering of protection around her life today. Amen. And all I ask is that you live in accordance with the Word of God so that that mantle will remain there. Amen. I believe you will. This is, we dedicated your other, how does, how does, He's four now. My goodness. So you all are wise, and I thank God. And as a, a father, the best thing you're going to do, and I know you will for this little girl, is to love her mama. And I know you will. He said, that's right. Amen. So we're going to pray for her at this time. Father, we lift before you rain Michaela White in the name of Jesus we dedicate her to you right now we thank you Father God for this prayer covering a protection around her life I thank you that in the spirit realm the enemy can see mantles he can see prayer he can see a lack of prayer he can see covering and he can see non-covering so I thank you that this father had the wisdom to bring his child to the altar to be covered, to be protected, to be prayed over. We plead the blood of Jesus all around her tender life. I decree and declare positive educational experiences. I thank you, God, that there'll not be a teacher that will break her spirit. I thank you that she will grow up a young lady, that she will never be confused about her, her identity. I thank you, God, that when she comes of age, the gifts and callings upon her life will manifest. I decree and declare she will walk with you and serve you and submit to you. And I thank you in advance that she will have a husbandman who will love her just like her father loves her mother. And I decree and declare in that household, hallelujah, that the presence of the Holy Spirit will dwell there. Hallelujah. That the principles of the system of the kingdom of God will prevail. That decision will be made according to thy kingdom come and thy will be done. And I thank you, God, that every gift talent I hear singing, I hear singing in her. And I thank you that you cultivate, cultivate that gift even now. Does she sing or try to sing? How old is she? She's two. Does she sing or react to people singing? 
There's a singer down in her. She's anointed to sing. Now, make sure, though, because a lot of people in life sing, but not everybody submits their gift to the Lord. Get her some voice lessons early. I know someone excellent if you need her. Get her in vocal lessons like around five, seriously, so she can learn how to take care of that because a lot of people can sing, but not everyone takes care of their voice. But she's anointed to sing. Amen. So, Father, thank you for revealing that. You said train up a child in the way they should go. Now we know. So now we know what to do. But I decree and declare excellence upon her life and all her goings. We dedicate her back to you now and the gift that's in her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is her baby dedication certificate. Amen. Given on this day from Set the Captives Free Outreach Center. And also, Dad, this is her first Bible. So what I need you to do, and you can start now, just read Proverbs in her ear, even if she's dozing off. Because what happens, you know how you get a thought sometimes and you go, where'd that come from? It's way deep down in your, what's it called, Elder Jan? The, oh, she's not here. The subconscious, that's it, thank you. In psychology, you learn that a lot of things are in the subconscious and they don't all, it, they pop up at different times. So if you begin putting Proverbs in her spirit now, it'll get down in her subconscious. See, she want to sing already. And uh, so start doing that, Dad, okay, for her and for your son. All right, give them a hand, family. Thank you so much. All right, God bless you. Thank you so much. Isn't she lovely? All right. So to close us out, our deaconess-elect Pat Robinson is going to come and pray for physical healing and wholeness for people everywhere. But listen, those of you who are here today, you've been informed. You are now accountable to take good care of your health. Amen. Good morning. My name is Pat Robinson. I am part of the STF prayer ministry where we pray for everyone and we pray for our pastors. We invite you to join us Monday through Friday for 7 a.m. prayer and 9 p.m. prayer where we cease without praying. My assignment for today is physical healing. So everyone, let's pray together. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift you up, we praise you, we worship you, we adore you, we magnify you, Lord God, we glorify you, and we give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. Lord God, we just ask right now that you just touch our physical bodies, Father God, wherever there is pain, Lord God, we ask that you touch them, bind up the pain, and loose your divine healing power all over our bodies. We ask, Lord God, that you touch every nerve, every cell, every tissue, everything in our body, Father God that needs your healing, Father God. Lord God, your word says that if any illness or diseases attacks our body, then by your stripes we are healed. Father God, we thank you for having mercy on us, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. So, Father God, we thank you for the healing. We put a praise on it, Lord God. We declare and decree in the name of Jesus that it is done, and we're thanking you right now, Father God. In your precious name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. She's going to be ordained in April. We do ordinations in December and April. So she and some others have been in training. And I think she's ready. What y'all think? Yeah, that's a prayer warrior. Glory to God. Again, thank you all for uh, what occurred today. God bless you. We just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The eagles are going to come and dismiss us, so please stay in your place until that um, happens. Amen.